What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video we are going to be talking about the 6 plus evolution island for the brand newly released on global and Korea first quick white beard now this was a total left field event and i'm super excited about it unfortunately the unit didn't really get an upgrade that many people were anticipating uh, especially you know once we did get the reveal that this character was coming out a lot of people were expecting bigger and greater things of the character and unfortunately they didn't really deliver in my personal opinion i think they could have done a lot more to make this character even more powerful than what he already is um so without further ado in this video today we're going to be talking about the unit himself uh and discussing his differences as well as going through three different teams I have for you guys in this video today in order to combat the 50 stamina difficulty of the 6 plus Whitebeard Island. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start talking about this brand newly released Whitebeard. I actually have all the skulls right now so I can super evolve him on video for you guys, which is awesome. I love the Super Evolve animation. I think they always do a really good job with it. And of course, the artwork itself for this Whitebeard man. F in the chat for, uh, for respects for Whitebeard man because this artwork is phenomenal so here we have the brand newly released super evolution of whitebeard so this character right here his stats are monstrous as well um so he's a quick powerhouse striker which do not change his captain ability does get a very minor change as well so he also will go ahead and reduce cooldowns at the start of the fight he also will then go ahead and still boost striker and powerhouse characters attack however they have changed his base multiplier. Previously, this character was a 2.5 times base that can scale up to a 4.5 times base. So what they've done here is that they've just increased the, the lower end of that scale. So instead of a 2.5 base starting, he now starts at 3.25, which is very, very good. Uh, a massive increase there, which means at full HP, you have 3.25 times attack, and at 1 HP, you have 4.5 times attack to your striker and powerhouse characters, meaning that if you're at half health, it is 3.85 times boost, whereas previously at half health, it was a 3.5 times boost. So very, very minor changes to his multiplier. Overall, the max damage that you can deal does not change. It's just that, you know, it's a lot easier to get more damage output in, you know, the stages prior to the final boss. Now, he also still reduces damage taken by 20%, but they've added an additional effect here where he makes recovery to zero. Now, this can be both a good and a bad thing. Of course, with a character that plays at low HP, you want to be making sure you're not picking up recovery orbs because that's going to hinder the amount of damage that you're ultimately going to be doing. So, by setting the recovery to zero, it means if you do accidentally hit a great or a good and you pick up a recovery orb that's not going to hinder your damage output in following turns which i think is a good thing but then again it depending on the situation picking up recovery orbs is going to be useful especially in some of the very high difficult content like garp challenges and training forests um, obviously it's not going to be a thing that you're going to need all the time but picking up recovery orbs is going to be useful in a lot of content for a lot of different teams and now this guy is no longer able to heal from that so as i said it is both a good and a bad thing but i, I can understand why they did it for this character now as for his special ability this is the big component where a lot of people are kind of upset so he's now a 13 turn cooldown i don't know if that actually changed before i'm not too sure let me go ahead and have a look at the old white beard i mean i can't really tell from this but either way uh the um the special is is slightly different so what they've done here is he he will now go ahead and reduce your cruise burn and despair duration by four turns just off the bat as soon as you activate it you get four turns of burn and despair removal which is interesting uh i don't really understand why they decided to go with that very very odd he still is a 0.7 chain booster and he still is a two times attack boost to powerhouse and striker characters now the added effect here where he will go ahead and uh you know give you the 95 percent damage reduction and the 20 turn removal of despair now will activate below 50 percent hp rather than previously where you had to be below 30%. So this added effect is the best change of the character in my personal opinion because if you're below half health you can just get a free 95% damage reduction and at that point you're basically taking no damage. You can essentially tank just about any death hit in the game um, which is fantastic and the 20 turn removal of despair is good um, but it just doesn't really make a lot of sense with the fact that he already reduces despair with the start of his special and then he also reduces it by even more turns which means that you can get a total of 24 removal of despair it's just super duper weird in my opinion i think what they should have done is remove the effect where he you know reduces burn and despair and just make it like type orbs are beneficial for one turn for striker and powerhouse that would have been like god tier but obviously you know can't be expecting too much here but overall i think the character could have been a lot better 
he didn't really get that much of a change and I know some people are going to ask you know should I keep an unevolved version of the character in my personal opinion I don't think it's that much of a stretch uh, that you should really keep an unevolved version of the character they're almost the same unit it's just the fact that this version of Whitebeard has a little bit more utility compared to the previous version but without further ado discussing the character overall I just love the artwork of the guy let's actually go ahead and talk about the dungeon itself so for those who don't know, this is legitimately a global first event. This particular island has never come out on the Japanese side of the game. So uh, us global players, we're definitely trying to learn things along the way here. So some of these things might change over time. HP values may be a little bit different, but overall the effects are pretty straightforward for this island. So stage one, Marco appears. He has about 800,000 HP and his preemptive attack cuts your health by 80% as well as applies 15 turns of recovery bind. So obviously, because they health cut you at the start and they try and you know block your healing a quick white beard is definitely one of the most ideal characters to be using as a captain in this particular dungeon stages two and three are very similar just with some regular mob stages and stage four is where we encounter one of the first boss stages which has a various amount of white beard pirates these characters are not that hard to beat. They only have around 500,000 hit points and their preemptive attack will apply one turn of special bind, two turns of slot bind and either three turns or less of despair. You can see that with sockets you are able to actually completely resist it. Um, so it is three turns or less. So make sure to have your despair sockets completely maxed out in this fight. So again, it's pretty straightforward. There's just six characters that you have to take down. Some of them do have effects that are applied below 20%, but a lot of the time, even if you do get them below 20%, it's not really enough to actually KO you unless if you're legitimately at like one HP. Also having the limit break potential ability recovery bind resistance to completely remove the recovery bind that's applied on stage one will help you out if your team isn't as strong and you may need to take a few hits. Definitely having the ability to remove the recovery bind is going to be good. Stage five is where we encounter Jozu uh, as well as some other white bit pirates. Jozu has about 400,000 or less HP. As you can see, Whitebeard Special is able to completely get around him. The thing about him that's really annoying is that he target locks it on himself, on Jozu. He has a barrier and also he has defense up as well. But once you kill Jozu, the blue shield of defense is just completely removed and then you can take down the rest of the characters uh, pretty simply here. You can see that in this example team, I'm using Treasure Map NL just to wipe out a lot of the HP on this stage after killing Jozu with a special, which is nice. Um, and then on stage six, on the second last stage, Stage, we have Marco and Vista. Both of them have about 3 million HP. The preemptive attack, you cannot reduce their defense and you cannot delay them. They apply a 10 turn special limit. So you can only use two specials per turn. All of your type slots will be randomized or all your slots will be randomized into type slots. And Vista actually becomes a dex unit. So that's something very, very important to note for this stage. And if you do not KO these guys after the first turn of attacks, then they will apply defensive effects where Marco applies damage reduction and Vista applies damage threshold. And the final boss stage, Whitebeard, is a quick unit with 20 million HP, but he does become a strength unit with his preemptive attack. He also cannot delay him. He also will reduce damage significantly from sign int characters. He applies 13 turns of despair and four turns of normal attacks only. So that's going to be very annoying to get around. All of your orbs are going to be changed into block orbs and he cuts your health by 99%, which again is why Quick Whitebeard is so good for this fight, as when Quick Whitebeard is below 30% HP, his special ability removes up to 20 turns of despair. So having Quick Whitebeard set as your captain or as your friend captain, like in this example here, where it's a very similar team to the Quick Whitebeard team you guys just saw, except you're using Snake Man as the captain compared to Quick Whitebeard. Uh, having Quick Whitebeard as a friend obviously is going to be very important for this fight, as it allows you to remove that despair which is very very good uh, the final team in this video is just showing you another example of another way you can get around the despair on the final boss stage against Whitebeard uh, also on uh, against Whitebeard he doesn't actually do anything after the first turn so if you need to stall for a special you can actually just pass one turn on stage seven and then go ahead and apply all of your effects to try and burst him down and that's definitely one of the reasons why there are another you know a couple of different ways you can get around the despair on stage seven which is the big component of this boss fight 
a lot of people on my stream today were asking me different replacements for characters um specifically with the Colosseum Neko Mamashi because we use him on stage six against the Vista and Marco stage and the thing about this is because Vista and Marco have a delay protector you can actually go ahead and use the Colosseum Neko Mamashi to give you a full board of matching orbs as well as giving a type boost to Striker and Powerhouse both of the classes that wipe it boost so Colosseum Neko is a very very good unit for this particular boss fight. Um, if you don't have him though, you can definitely replace him with someone like Colosseum Oven, who is an orb booster, and then you can apply another type booster on your team, like Legend Lucy, for example. That's another really good unit that you could use here because he is a striker character, and he is uh, boosted on, on the white bid team, and predominantly you want to be running strength, dex, and quick characters for this fight, as the final boss fight does have a damage reduction shield against sign int characters. In this particular team example, we do have the Rare Recruit Cracker here. However, if you have the Legend variation of Cracker, I would highly suggest putting him on your team because using his special ability on the final boss fight to not only change your orbs into matching that are given to you, but to give you the color affinity and also to give you that chain boost is going to be freaking awesome and making it a whole lot easier for you to take this down this team that actually you're seeing right now only was just able to clear it like literally by the skin of the teeth so uh, the support units that i have on these units are, are probably very required so if you are you know choosing to run a team like this i would probably suggest to, have, to run very good support units or to change the units up and run higher statistical quick units uh, against the final boss whitebeard so the final team you guys will be seeing in this video is going to be a Douglas Bullet team and massive shout out to SlowPTC for actually giving us the inspiration for this team, so shout out to him. Also another shout out I have to give is to Godot from the One Piece Treasure Crew subreddit Discord who uh, was one of the people who went hard in actually continuously playing the dungeon over and over to gain knowledge and passing that knowledge around about this particular island. So massive shout out to Godot. Link to his channel and SlowPTC's channel will be down below in the description. Make sure go ahead and check those guys out but on that guys uh we're gonna end this video here hopefully you guys did enjoy this video today and if you guys did enjoy it make sure you go ahead and hit the like button and if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that i post on my channel including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video